Hi, welcome to another episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. I'm your host Marek and this is episode 106 of your weekly video podcast about anything Photoshop, Lightroom and photography and Adobe. It's Easter week, we're going to have a break after this week, so there will be no Photoshop Lightroom TV next week. And this time I've got a video in Lightroom for you, a video tutorial. So for a change we're going to start with the Lightroom and this is going to be a tutorial on working with files in Lightroom, how Lightroom organizes. I'm going to show you what happens when you develop images in Lightroom, how the information about the changes is being stored in Lightroom and what you can do to export images and save metadata into files as well. And I'm also going to cover um, just a bit of DNG. If you haven't heard about DNG, DNG is another format for RAW. DNG stands for Digital Negative and it's a file format that's been developed by Adobe. To well, there's a lot of debate about DNG versus other RAW proprietary RAW formats. One of the big advantages of DNG is it's not proprietary like Canon, Nikon or Fuji formats. So I've got these images in here got this folder for the winter shots in here. I'm going to show you what they look like on the computer. So I'm just going to click on one of the images, maybe this one here. I'll right click on it and choose show in explorer or if you're on a Mac, show in finder. That's how you can quickly find where the images are. The on here, there are some raw images. RAW is the raw format for from Fuji and there are two JPEGs as well. So as you can see there are no other files in here. Now let me make some changes. So I'm going to maybe quickly edit one of the images. This one, for example, is going to jump into develop module. Just make a few changes to this image. Remember everything you do in Lightroom is non-destructive and Lightroom remembers everything you do. With this image here, what I'm going to do is, it's just loading, it's a high-res image. I'm going to minimize that for a moment. I'm going to drag the highlights slightly to the left and the whites as well and blacks just to bring more blacks into the image here we go maybe increase exposure just a bit add some clarity here we go as you can see here I've made if I scroll down to the history made some changes so I'll go back to the library module Go back to the grid view, just G on a keyboard, right click, uh, show in Explorer. Okay, this is the image, nothing around, because what's happening is Lightroom is saving all the changes into catalog. What you can do is with the image selected, if you go to the photo menu, actually metadata, I'm sorry, metadata menu, what you can do in here is you can save metadata to file. Okay. So if I click on that, what it's going to say is for proprietary ROM formats, that they will be saved to sidecar files next to the original photo. Okay. If you use JPEG, TIFF or PSD or DNG, XMV metadata will be written into the original file. This is raw file, so I'm fine with that, I'll just click continue. Looks like nothing's changed here, but if I right click on this image, go showing, uh, choose showing explorer once again, or showing finder, now what you're going to notice is, is this XMP file that saves all the information about what's changed to the image. Okay, And it's just a normal text file. I'm just going to open it in Notepad. You can see <coughs> there's lots of information here about what's changed to the image, including some copyright or the metadata. Okay. I'm just going to close that. I'm just going to delete that. Yes, I'm going to move it back to the bin. We'll close it, back into Lightroom. Okay. Another option you get with the Lightroom is when you work with the raw images, or not just raw, but especially with raw, is when you go to metadata, you can also read metadata from the file. Okay. So if you have an XMP file, you can read metadata from the file. And one more option I want to show you here is when you go to the photo menu in here, one of the things you can do is you can also apply develop settings. 
so you can quickly apply some develop settings to the images. Okay. Just another way of working with images in here. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial in Lightroom. And remember, if you have any questions or if you want me to create a tutorial about anything, just let me know. Contact me. This is the only video tutorial for this week. We go with, so it's a bit short uh, episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. So I would like to thank you for stopping by. I'm just going to leave you with a tip of the week before I leave. This week's tip of the week is going to be in for in photography, as usual it is. Keep experimenting when taking photographs. Uh, if you have a better compact or an SLR camera or a compact system camera, if you haven't yet, explore the manual mode and try working manual mode where you can set up the aperture and the shutter speed yourself so you're not relying on the camera. Or if not, at least use the AV or TV modes, the aperture priority or the shutter speed priority modes just to get a bit more creative so you're not relying just on the program mode in camera. I've never used program mode in my camera when taking photographs, no. Or the green rectangle, no. So give it a go, experiment. And one final tip, if you still shoot in snow, if you still have snow, like we still do, <laughs> remember to overexpose your images just a bit. One third of a stop, up to half a stop, overexpose them so you get better and nice images of the snow, otherwise it's going to be blue instead of white. And that's it for this week. Thank you for coming over and watching episode of Photoshop Lightroom TV. I'm your host Marek and I will see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.